Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today and over the past few days. This afternoon, Rear Admiral John Mauger will be providing an update on the most recent findings from ROV operations in search of the Titan submersible. He will provide a brief statement and provide the opportunity for questions after. Please limit your questions to one per outlet. Following the briefing, the Joint Information Center staff and I will be here to help you with any of your further needs. May I now please introduce Rear Admiral John Mauger. This morning, an ROV or remote operated vehicle from the vessel Horizon Arctic discovered the tail cone of the Titan submersible approximately 1,600 feet from the bow of the Titanic on the seafloor. The ROV subsequently found additional debris. In consultation with experts from within the Unified Command, the debris is consistent with the catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. Upon this determination, we immediately notified the families. On behalf of the United States Coast Guard and the entire Unified Command, I offer my deepest condolences to the families. I can only imagine what this has been like for them, and I hope that this discovery provides some solace during this difficult time. Additionally, we've been in close contact with the British and French Consuls General to ensure that they are fully apprised and that their concerns are being addressed. The outpouring of support in this highly complex search operation has been robust and immensely appreciated. We are grateful for the rapid mobilization of experts on the undersea search and rescue, and we thank all of the agencies and personnel for their role in the response. We're also incredibly grateful for the full spectrum of international assistance that's been provided. The ROVs will remain on scene and continue to gather information. Again, our most heartfelt condolences go out to the loved ones of the crew. We'll now take questions. John, what other debris have you found? John, what other debris have you found? Can you talk about the delay in uh, reporting the vessel missing and what impact that had on the uh, recovery? This was a uh, incredibly uh, complex uh, case, uh, and we're still working to develop the details uh, for the timeline involved uh, with uh, this casualty and uh, the response. And so, James Matthews from Sky News. John, what other debris have you found? And have you found any trace of those who were on board? So this is an incredibly complex uh, operating environment on the seafloor over two miles uh, beneath the surface. And so uh, the, the remote operating vehicle has been searching and it is highly capable. Uh, and we've been able to classify uh, parts of the uh, pressure chamber uh, for uh, the Titan submersible. Let me refer to uh, one of my uh, undersea experts here uh, Mr. Uh, Paul Hankin to talk about uh, the nature of some of the debris. Uh, thank you, Admiral. So, so essentially we found uh, five different major pieces of, of debris that uh, told us that it was the uh, remains of the Titan. The initial thing we found was the nose cone, which was outside of the pressure hull. Um, we then found a large debris field. Within that large debris field, uh, we found the, f the front end bell of the pressure hull. Um, 
that was the first indication that um, there was a catastrophic event. Um, shortly thereafter, we found the a second smaller debris field. Within that debris field, uh, we found the the other end of the pressure hull, the the aft end bell, um, which was basically the comprise of the totality of that pressure vessel. Um, we continue to map the debris field, and as the Admiral said, we will uh, do the best we can to fully map out what's down there. Admiral, is there? So, so the question was uh, related. I'm restating the question from the standpoint of uh, sometimes it's hard to hear the question here. Uh, what are the prospects for re uh, recovering uh, crew members? And so uh, this is a incredibly unforgiving uh, environment down there uh, on the seafloor. Uh, and uh, the debris is consistent with a catastrophic uh, implosion of uh, the vessel. And so uh, we'll continue to uh, work and continue to uh, search uh, the area uh, down there, but uh, I, I don't have an answer for uh, prospects at this time. Admiral, it's Tom Costello at NBC News. Is there any suggestion, sorry, any suggestion at all that the, that the sub itself collided with the wreckage of Titanic or that in, instead it might have imploded above the wreckage and then rained down nearby? So uh, the question was, is there any question as to whether or not the sub collided with the Titanic or whether it uh, imploded uh, above and, and debris uh, field created from that? Uh, so the, uh, the, the location of the Titan submersible was in an area that was approximately 1,600 feet uh, from uh, the uh, wreck of the Titanic. Uh, I have uh, an expert here that can that is familiar with that area and can talk about uh, the debris field and and what uh, the debris field indicates in terms of uh, the where the casualty may have occurred. Rear Admiral, really quickly, can you tell me when that Wait, let's get the expert voice, please. Back. Hang on a second. The expert voice is coming up to answer the question. Uh, uh, thank you, Admiral. Uh, so the question is, where does the wreck lie in uh, relation to the Titanic? Uh, I didn't hear the Admiral's uh, answer. I think 1,600 feet. Was that correct, Admiral? Yep. Uh, so that's, uh, that's off the bow of Titanic. It's in an area where there is not any debris of Titanic. It is a smooth bottom. Uh, there, to my knowledge and anything I've seen, there's no Titanic wreckage in that area. And again, 200 plus meters from the bow uh, and consistent with the location of last communication uh, for an implosion in the water column. And the size of the debris field is uh, consistent with that implosion in the water column. What was, what was the implosion? Implosion? In terms of the timing here, uh, you say that this was a catastrophic implosion. And I know it's early on, but is it your estimation that this happened right at the moment when they lost contact an hour and 45 minutes after their descent? Uh, so the question was about the timing of the catastrophic implosion. Uh, right now, it is uh, too early to tell uh, with that. Uh, we know that uh, as we've been prosecuting uh, this search uh, over the course of the last uh, 72 hours uh, and, and beyond, uh, that we've had sonar buoys in the water uh, nearly continuously and have not uh, detected any uh, catastrophic events uh, when those sonar buoys have been in the water. So. Admiral, can you describe what happens from here for uh, the next days and weeks in terms of finding uh, any more debris? What happens from here? So we will, uh, the question was, uh, what happens from here? Uh, what, what's the next phase? Um, and so right now, uh, again, our uh, thoughts are uh, with the families uh, and making sure that uh, uh, they have uh, um, an understanding as best as we can provide uh, of, of uh, what happened and, and uh, begin to uh, find uh, some closure. Uh, in terms of the large process, we're going to continue to uh, investigate the uh, site of uh, the debris field. Uh, and then I know that there's also a lot of questions about 
uh, how, why, and when uh, did this happen? Um, and so, uh, you know, those are questions that uh, we will uh, collect as much information as we can on uh, now. Uh, while uh, the governments are, are meeting and, and discussing, uh, you know, uh, what uh, uh, an investigation of this uh, nature of uh, a casualty might look like. This is something that happened, I'll just, just remind everybody, this is something that happened in a remote portion of the, of the ocean uh, with uh, uh, people uh, from, you know, uh, several different countries around the world. Uh, and so it is a uh, complex uh, case to work through, but I, I, I'm confident that uh, uh, those questions will uh, begin to get answered. Will the Coast Guard lead the investigation, sir? Uh, the uh, the question was uh, was there any suggestion that uh, time factors uh, w may have uh, played a a, um, a a role or or a consideration in uh, the the casualty here, and so the debris field is consistent with a catastrophic uh, uh, implosion of the vessel. Uh, again, while uh, we were prosecuting the search, we had uh, listening devices uh, in the water throughout and did not hear uh, any uh, signs of catastrophic uh, failure uh, from those. And so we're going to continue to uh, investigate, uh, or we're going to continue to uh, document the information there and, and understand, uh, based on all the information we have, the, the timeline. So the question was, what uh, what are the resources required for the investigation, and which ships will be pulling out and uh, staying in? And so uh, it, it's too early uh, for me to talk about an investigation. That's a decision that's going to be taken outside of uh, the search and and uh, uh, efforts that uh, I was leading. Uh, and but we do have a number of vessels. We have uh, nine vessels on the scene right now. Uh, we had uh, medical uh, personnel on scene. We had other technicians uh, on scene. And so we will begin uh, to demobilize uh, personnel and, and vessels uh, from the scene uh, over the course of the next uh, uh, 24 hours. Uh, but we're going to continue uh, remote operations on the seafloor. Uh, and, and I don't have a timeline for when uh, we would uh, intend to stop remote operations on the seafloor at this point. Yeah, the, the question was essentially about uh, do you think that there should be changes in safety ratings or inspection uh, for these standards? Uh, I know that there's a lot of questions about why, how, when uh, this happened, and, and uh, the members of the Unified Command, you know, uh, have those questions too as, as professionals and experts that work uh, in this environment. And this is an, an incredibly uh, difficult and dangerous environment uh, to work in out there. But those, those questions uh, about uh, the uh, regulations that apply and, and uh, the standards, uh, that's going to be, I'm sure, a uh, focus of future uh, review. Uh, right now, uh, we're focused on uh, documenting uh, the, the scene and, and continuing the, the support. I know we don't know the timing here. We, we don't know the timing here, but there was the banging noise yesterday that redirected and redeployed the ROVs to this area. Do you think that there was anything So uh, throughout uh, the search efforts, we uh, reacted to uh, the information uh, that we had available to us. Uh, and while we continue to uh, send it off for de uh, deeper analysis, again, really complex uh, operating environment for us to work in. Uh, let me uh, check uh, with the experts, but there doesn't appear to be any 
uh, connection between uh, the noises and uh, uh, the location uh, on the seafloor. Again, uh, this uh, was a uh, catastrophic uh, implosion of the vessel, which would have generated uh, a significant broadband sound uh, down there that uh, the sonar buoys would have picked up. Admiral, a lot of questions Admiral, about who know, might Admiral, be. Admiral, you mentioned closure for the families. Admiral, can I just ask you about your, your comment regarding the families? This was a uh, incredibly uh, complex operation, uh, and uh, we were able to uh, mobilize an immense amount of gear uh, to the site in uh, just a, a really a remarkable amount of time, uh, given the fact that we started without any sort of uh, vessel response plan for this or any sort of pre-stage resources. And so the equipment uh, that was brought on site this morning uh, that we were using uh, was a, a pelagic ROV uh, capable of operating at 6,000 meters, uh, cameras, sonar, uh, other uh, articulating arms and, and uh, resources on it. Uh, and it, uh, you know, we had to transport it here through C-17 uh, aircraft. This is two aircraft that it took to get this up here. And so uh, we've really had the, the right uh, gear on site and worked uh, as, uh, as, as uh, swiftly as possible to bring all of the capabilities that we had to bear uh, to uh, this search and rescue effort. Uh, and it was just a huge uh, international and interagency uh, effort to make this happen. Uh, so I'm, I'm really grateful for all of uh, the responders uh, that came out to support this uh, and and really uh, you know search uh, for uh, for the vessel it is a difficult day uh, for all of us um, and and it's especially difficult uh, for the families and our thoughts are with the families uh, today um, but uh, this was an immense uh, support and we had the right gear on the bottom uh, to to find it Will you attempt to recover the bodies, can we ask you, though? The victims, will they be recovered? Thank you so much, everyone, for attending this afternoon. There are no future planned press conferences.